So in this video, we're going to use a double integral in polar coordinates to find the volume of a sphere of radius a. Um, so if this is all you're given, you might say like, well, where do I start? Um, well, we know we're using a double integral and we know we're using polar. So I'm going to have to figure out the region and I also have to have to figure out the equation that we're going to integrate. So um, I'm going to work off of the equation of a sphere of radius a. Um, we know that um, x squared, and there's, there's, you know, other ways to do this that might be a little bit quicker, but I think that this will make sense. Um, so I, I'm going to go with x squared plus y squared plus z squared is a squared. That would be the formula of the equation of a sphere in rectangular coordinates. Um, what I want you to notice is, or sorry, a sphere of radius a in rectangular coordinates. What I want you to notice is that I can solve for z, and it's equal to uh, plus or minus the square root of a squared minus 1 minus, or sorry, minus x squared plus y squared. Now, if we know that we're converting to polar, you should recognize that this is equal to r squared. So um, what I can do is um, consider z equals plus or minus uh, the square root of a squared minus r squared. That's going to be the equation of a sphere um, uh, with uh, polar coordinates here. So um, the next thing that I need to do is um, uh, figure out my integral. Well, if I've got a sphere, try to draw it. Not the greatest sphere. It's okay. Maybe I'll redo that. I've got this sphere right here of radius a, so this would be a right there, and that would be a. Um, uh, you should, it, it, it's obvious that the top half and the bottom half of this thing are the same. The top half is going to be the plus that root, and the bottom half is going to be the minus of that root. Um, and when I mean by the top half is the same, the volume of the top half of this and the volume of the bottom half of this are the same. So um, what I'm going to do is my volume of the sphere of radius a is equal to, um, I'm going to go and do the integral from 0 to 2 pi. That's because we are going all the way around from uh, 0, all the way around to 2 pi, because that's how polar coordinates work. Um, and then um, the integral from 0 to a that's going to be um, the radius that we are integrating over. I'm going from here out to there in every spot. Maybe I'll change colors. I'm going from the center out to a given spot on the edge for every angle um, of root a squared minus r squared times r dr d theta. Um, there's a parenthesis there if you want it to be. Um, notice what I did was I just took the top half of this um, of this sphere because um, uh, it's easier for me to say, all right, we'll take the top half and double it. Um, I could do, I guess it's really, it's, you know, I could do top minus bottom and do the top half minus the bottom half, and it would wind up giving me the same two there. It would just take more work to get there because I would do this minus a negative that, and it would give me double negative, add them to get a plus. So either way, we're going to get two integral zero to pi, and then integral zero to a, because those are the r's we're going along, and these are the thetas we're going along, of this thing times r d r d theta. Um, so from here, it's just integration. Um, I'm not going to show the use of this time. Integral zero to two pi. Um, and then when I integrate this, this is... Uh, a squared minus r squared to the half power. Um, and I guess maybe, um, no, I'm not going to rewrite it. So this is the u sub that we want to have right in front of that square root. So it's already set up for us to do it well. Um, I'm going to go a squared minus r squared to the, what's one above three uh, above a half, three halves. And then I need to multiply by two thirds to balance the power rule. And I need to multiply by a negative 2 to balance the chain rule on that. So it's going to cancel like that. Um, the theta. And then um, what's that give me? It is 2 
times um, the integral from 0 to 2 pi of negative 1 third. And then I'm going to open and then do a log and close. Um, sorry, I left my evaluated out. Evaluate from r equals 0 to r equals a. Um, and then d theta. Uh, so I'm going to get r equals a plugged in here minus r equals, whoops, right in the wrong spot, r equals 0 plugged in there. And what I want you to see, when I plug in r equals a here, I get a squared minus a squared to the 3 halves. Well, that's just 0 to the 3 halves, which is going to be 0. And then when I plug in r equals 0, um, I get uh, a negative not negative, I subtract this 0. I plug in minus 0, right? So minus 0 squared. Well, that's just nothing. So I just get a squared, and then that gets raised to the 3 halves. So um, this simplifies a whole lot. Um, I'm going to write this as 2 thirds. I'm going to move the third out. And then this negative is good. Well, this, this whole thing is 0. This negative is going to get applied into there to give me a plus. Um, so, and then I'm going to get a squared to the 3 halves. Well, that's square rooted and then cubed. If I take squared, square root it, cube it, it gives me a cubed, um, uh, and then integrate that from 0 to 2 pi d theta. Well, that is um, 2 thirds a cubed times theta evaluated from 0 to 2 pi, which gives me 2 thirds a cubed times 2 pi, and then I'll get minus a 0, but I'm not going to show that. You should be okay with that because we've been doing that a lot lately, which just gives me 4 pi a cubed over 3. Or you should know the formula from before where we write 4 thirds pi um, r cubed, but here we're doing r equals a. So this matches the formula that we know, and that is where it comes from. So without going back and redoing this whole thing, I do want to address one thing that I did that may have been a little misleading and not correct, and that is um, that green line that I just drew there. Um, what I should really say is that we want to take 0 out to a on in, in that circle. I'm just That is a way to define the region on the x and the y. If I go 0 out to a, and then I take that and I span it all the way around, from 0 to 2 pi, that's why I go 0 to a on the r's and 0 to 2 pi on the radius, because what that'll do is it'll cover this entire area, and then I'm subtracting those two. So really, it's like having this and then spinning it all the way around here, and then I'm getting all of this region, and within each of those spots, I'm doing this minus that times 2, or you can think of it as this minus that, those z heights. So hopefully that helps clarify something that I kind of didn't say well, um, and helps you see how we get these bounds and why this works.